Hey, what's going on friends? My name is John Waldman. I'm a filmmaker based in New York and today I want to share my first thoughts on the Sony 70-200 G Master version 2 f2.8. Why did I buy this lens? Let's just kind of get a little backstory cooking as we usually do. So when I got started, I was primarily shooting on Canon DSLRs and I collected various different Canon zoom lenses. One of them was the 70-200 f2.8. Eventually I made the switch over to Sony, but I still was stuck with the Canon glass for a bit. I ultimately decided I wanted to go with Sony, so the Canon 70-200 f2.8, absolutely gorgeous lens, but I kept running into issues with the Metabones adapter. It never quite felt like it was on there, and then also you don't get autofocus with that. And so what I did, I didn't want to buy the f2.8 at first, and this was before the version 2 came out. So I sold my 70-200 to 8 Canon and I bought the Sony 70-200 F4. That is an awesome lens if you're on a budget and it's super lightweight, but I should have taken my own advice with buy nice or buy twice. Of course, after a while, I wanted that F2.8, so I sold the Sony 70-200 F4 and then I scooped up the 2.8 version. So, and at the time when I was ready for an F2.8 70-200, yes, I could have gone with the version one, but the version 2 had just come out and I did a little bit of research on it. Also, if you could like this video and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to grow. The goal is a thousand this year. I'm starting to get a little bit of a momentum here over the last two videos. I'm super stoked. The version 1 had some reported back focusing issues and my thought was if I was already going to spend $2,000 on a lens, I may as well get the newer, better one without any issues or, you know, if I had bought that one, I would have been like, dang, I wish I just bought the version 2. But I'd say the, the main reason I got it, it is so freaking light. Like, I have never picked up a 70-200 f2.8 lens this light. It blows my mind. So I kind of felt, albeit maybe it was another seven, eight hundred dollars I kind of felt at a over $2,000 price point, I felt paying $3,000 for this was worth it. Again, this is just my first thoughts with the lens. It probably hasn't even been six months, so I can't call this a full-on review. But all right, let's just talk about some of the pros. So yeah, first off, and the main selling point, it is light. It is absolutely the lightest 70 to 200 f2.8 I've ever held. Once you get it in your hand, slap it on your camera, you'll know what I'm talking about. Contrary to my last video when I was talking about vintage lenses and why you might want to pick one up, this lens is extremely sharp and I kind of like the versatility of having a pretty sharp piece of glass. You now I could always diffuse the lens if I want to or do some stuff in post. Yeah, this thing is tack sharp if sharpness is your jam. The color rendition is beautiful. It renders some beautiful colors. Uh, I'm going to show some imagery throughout this video, both photos and video, uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Also, just while we're on the image, the bokeh, it's so creamy, it's so nice, uh, it just produces such a lovely image. Yeah, next up, the autofocus is fantastic. It is just, just snaps super quick, no lagging, no back focusing, it's just like boom, boom, boom. Big fan of that. Next up would be, I, I said I'd put the lens down, I can't, uh, is the optical steady shot. You might look at something like the Tamron 70 to 180. I'm pretty sure that lens does not have any optical steady shot. And in my opinion, if you're buying a long lens, something modern, I think you should have optical steady shot. It just helps even out those micro jitters. You could shoot handheld easier. Uh, it's just something that I think is important, especially with this newer glass. And so there's three modes of optical steady shot. To my knowledge, there's, so there's one, two, and three. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. I think the bigger the number, the more steadiness you get, I'm pretty sure. Also, so there are these customizable buttons. Personally, I've never used them, but if that's your thing, you got three of them. They put this the aperture ring on the outside with video shooters in mind. You have the option to de-click the aperture also, so it's nice and smooth. Personally, when I'm using Sony lenses, I'm just like really used to changing the aperture with my camera. So I usually just keep it on the A so you could do that. But you know, if you're more used to, you know, changing your iris like this, you have that option. So that is a cool feature. Another thing, I really like this cold shoe mount. It pops off really easy. It's a nice design. Um, and then yeah, just kind of going off on that, like this thing is built so freaking nice. It's crazy. I don't know. Technology is sick. <laughs> All right. The only con I am going to throw out here is the price, $3,000. You pay for what you get, buy nice or buy twice. I'm literally going to have this forever. There's nothing with this lens that I could think, dang, I wish I had this feature. So I'm going to have this forever unless I change camera systems. Big fan. <laughs> 
All right, another thing I just want to pop in here real quick. The focus ring is pretty sensitive, so it's not necessarily my favorite lens for doing manual focuses. I was doing a shoot last night where I was pretty much doing mostly manual focus. It was a concert. It was very sensitive, and that's probably what makes the autofocus so great. And you know, a lot of times I am just keeping it on, on autofocus. I don't know if that's something I could dial in a setting I could change. Can I customize it? I don't know. What am I using this $3,000 behemoth for? This lens is living on my B camera. I use it for my tight profile shots when I'm doing interviews. Pretty much my bread and butter setup. I have my FX6 with a 24 to 70, an FX3 with a 70 to 200. That could get you very far. And I love, you know, both of those cameras match great and the versatility of those focal lengths, it is perfect. Uh, so yeah, this guy is always awesome for those close-up shots for my B angle for interviews. So next, I, I also love this for portraits and headshots. While I don't necessarily consider myself a photographer, even though some of my friends and people might think I am, and I do shoot photos, but I primarily consider myself a cinematographer at this point, but I still do shoot photos for fun, and you know, I also do get photo work from time to time. Uh, oftentimes, I have a corporate client, we're doing corporate video, they wanna you know, tell their story or shoot some marketing content, and then, they're like, oh, can you also shoot photos? And yeah, I'm gonna add on headshots. You know, always always be upselling. Either I'll do that or I'll have one of my colleagues do that. Anyways, this lens is an absolute portrait beast. I also love it for shooting architectural cityscape kind of stuff. You know, there's something kind of nice with shooting that kind of stuff with a really long lens. The compression is awesome. I also really like it, you know, if I'm shooting B-roll and I really want to isolate a subject, it's just like, that 70 to 200 compression and that flexibility of the zoom range, uh, it is dope for that. So yeah, I mean, this was a pretty quick video. I know I didn't really get into too much specifics, the nitty gritty. I just wanted to kind of share my first thoughts and you know, maybe you watch this and you think, all right, maybe it is worth getting this over the V1 or you like it more than the Tamron 70 to 180 or maybe you're like, John, you're crazy. I'm gonna go get a completely different lens. Anyways, I, this has been a really valuable add to my kit. I can't see it going anywhere anytime soon, but yeah. Let me know your thoughts about the lens. Will you be picking one of these up? Do you have a different long zoom lens? Let's get some discussions going. Cheers. Bye.